Hey everyone, how's it going? Another stream today. It's been two weeks since the last one. Uh, today, part two of the 4.5 year anniversary. So, um, the cat's joining in already, jeez. Today, there's a new unit. If you don't know much about him, basically, he's a new store unit. So, I won't spoil much if you haven't done the new story. Because he shows up towards the end of the newest story so there, there wasn't too much information on him but today we're gonna have a look at prefect of god's garland and the new arc there is a halloween event going on i need to get this cat off this chair there is a halloween event going on at the same time there is a new halloween arc which is interesting uh all the halloween arcs are available for free right now in a gacha all you got to do is just find the event and get the arc, so we'll have a look at that too. Uh, but first, let's have a look at Prefect of God Garland now. Get off the chair. Get off, get off, get off, get off. The first Prefect of God unit we got is Prefect of God Mia. And she is pretty damn good in Arena, as you know. And she's a God type unit. And so is Prefect of God Garland. So, what I think so far is that since they're Prefects of Gods, the, the future Prefect of God units are probably all going to be God types as well. That's what it seems like because all of these Prefect of Gods are just Gods. Like, I, the Advocate of Gods weren't all God types, I believe. But the Prefects of Gods so far have all been God types. But we've only had Mia and Prefect of God Garland. Those are the only two we've got in the game so far. I'm interested to see what other Prefect of God units we get. But let's have a look at him first of all. Hopefully the cat doesn't come back and bother me again. Stupid. So he looks pretty damn cool. I admit. He looks great. And he's God type. That's going to be really good for PvP. And just to say this right now. He's probably going to be another PvP unit because we'll have to see but a lot in his kit is more aimed towards pvp and survivability and since he's a god type he's not going to be a human type so that's going to help quite a bit and just seems pretty cool i'm hoping he is very strong in arena but no idea yet probably not at the same level as prefect of god mia but let's have a look at his stats first of all i think when i was reading this unit he looks very interesting to me his stats, HP, pretty decent, strength, defense. This is the first time we've got a dual wield unit that has higher defense than strength, which is quite interesting. He has decent mind too. Intelligence, don't really need that because he's just going to be a physical DPS unit. But what I have seen with this unit, what I've seen is it just feels like he's more of a single wield unit in terms of he's pretty tanky because single wield units usually have more survivability than a dual wield unit. Dual wield units usually don't are not able to survive that much damage, but he seems like he's gonna be pretty tanky, I think. Attitude resistances minus twenty to ice because he's gonna be a fire DPS unit. Makes sense. The rest of the attribute resistances look okay. The M1 resistances actually look pretty good. Resistance to stun and illness and nil to curse. It's pretty great. He's not weak to anything, so I think that's a good thing. So now we get on to the abilities. Uh, his abilities, honestly, they look pretty interesting, even though they are just uh, basic combo attack skills. His skill one, forward dash to close in for medium area fire combo attack. So when it's like some kind of dash, it usually helps with getting in to the battle because there is some lunge to it. So that could help a little bit. I think his skill 2 is the most interesting skill because it doesn't say it here but it instantly close the gap for a wide area fire combo attack. So first of all it's a close the gap skill which is amazing we like to see those and it's a wide area combo attack which is nice too but what it doesn't say here is it does have a like grouping effect. Hey we're just getting started today it's going to be interesting but for sure I know it's not going to be as long as the last stream. His skill 2 is going to be pretty great, and apparently I heard that his skill 2 only has one skill stock, which may be a problem, but lower skill stocks usually help in 
PvP, so it isn't really a big deal. In PvE though, that may be a problem, but I think his skill 2 is going to be his main skill, I think for sure, because it's a closer gap skill and it can group enemies, it seems, and I hope that the grouping is pretty solid, because if it is, then you could just instantly use your skill 2 anywhere on the map and close a gap and group all the enemies together and it should be great but we're just gonna have to see and I don't know how spammable these skills are yet but I'm mostly interested in the skill 2 the most skill 3 looks decent too for a dash closes in for a wide area fire combo attack kind of similar to his skill 1 at least what it says here nothing interesting about his skill 3 I think his skill 2 is the most interesting personally his special is kind of interesting uh, again, I don't really care too much about specials, but it at least has some damage to it. And the words are so small from my TV that it's hard to read it. <laughs> Cut all other allies max HP by 20% for a fire combo attack to one enemy. So it does one target first, and then f followed by a powerful combo attack to all enemies, damage cap plus 50,000. The damage cap 50,000, I don't know if it's to only to the all enemy attack or if it's to the whole thing, because 50,000 damage cap for a special is pretty good. If he had true dual wield, that would have been even better, because that damage cap with double hits of special, with a high hit special, would have been amazing, but that would have been too strong, wouldn't it? Yeah. It's an interesting special. I mean, I don't really say too much about it, other than it's just kind of a basic damage special. And there's not much to it. Traits gets a lot more interesting. Personally, I these traits always get interesting, but there's a lot of good stuff here. So trait one, when using a skill, can't be interrupted by most attacks. This is great, and this is the first time we've seen this, I believe, on a dual wield unit. Obviously, his dual wield because he's he's got two swords on his artwork. Obviously, if they're going to have two swords on their artwork, then they should have dual wield, right? You would think so. It definitely does. Not being interrupted by most attacks is incredibly useful. You can just keep spamming skills. What that will allow you to do is use a skill 2 and you don't really need flinch resistance because you should be immune to the interruption by enemy attacks anyway, so that sounds good to me. Physical damage taken minus 50%. That's a lot. Minus 50% physical damage taken is just a lot by itself. But there's a chance to cut the damage cut effect amount by 1% when you're taking damage. So I don't know what the chance is, but I'm assuming it's pretty high. My guess is like 50% or something per, is basically per hit you take. So if you're getting hit by like a Summer Sarah, then she, since she's dual wield, you're going to be losing that buff faster than a single wield unit would hit you. But it's still pretty good because... It restores 10% when using skills. So as long as you keep spamming skills, it's going to be no problem keeping this buff up. And that's pretty much it. All you've got to do is just keep using skills and that buff, take 50% That's physical damage, is going to be up most of the time, I'm assuming. So sounds really good to me. Sounds amazing, actually. Does help for survivability quite a bit, mostly for PvP though, I think. When an ally is incapacitated, give unit an enemy attention drawn plus 2 buff. This is another interesting thing. As you know, drawing more attention is very useful. And we know this from Summer Sarah because her unique buff at the start of battle and everything is just quite useful. And it is incredibly useful in PvP content, especially, well, Arena and Guild vs. Guild. They're kind of both useful there. So... Basically, when anyone dies on your team, he's going to get a buff for drawing more enemy attention, plus two, which could help, potentially, maybe. If someone snipes your healer or something, or your mage, then he's going to get more attention drawn to him, which sounds good. Sounds great. And he also won't faint from enemy attacks, which there have been a few, a few units, especially from the previous collab, then if Valkyrie, I know for sure, didn't have resist faint, so it's good to see a unit that
the cameras are spent because occasionally it can be annoying and there aren't that many ways to prevent fainting so when the unit does have won't faint from enemy attacks just kind of helps so as you see from his trait one there isn't any damage here it's just a bunch of useful things like not being interrupted and taking less damage is basically what it is and not fainting and not more enemy attention sounds very good to me honestly but if you think of where this will be useful the trait one alone not being interrupted by most attacks is just useful everywhere basically but taking less physical damage that probably mostly applies to pvp honestly because i don't know how many bosses do physical attacks and i don't know this is mostly a pvp related skill same thing when an ally isn't incapacitated give the units an enemy drawing attention plus two buff that's kind of the same thing doesn't really matter too much in pve it's mostly just for pvp and won't fainting it does kind of help everywhere so i guess it's fine now as trait two is obviously going to be more damage related each weapon equipped fire damage 25 percent of damage cap 12,000. so obviously because of this you want to have two weapons but the good thing is it's not requiring you to use two swords at least on this trait too it doesn't require you to use two swords so you could have a sword and something else like a sword and trishula probably if you want could work as long as you have two weapons then you're fine and you're getting the maximum bonus from the straight so that's great i do like that 30 percent damage and a lot of damage cap too it's pretty good nullify defense down debuffs from active skills that is also very good um I don't think it applies to like Theopolis, I don't think it ever has on other units that have had similar effects on their traits. Personally, hasn't been too useful as you would think, but it's something it's still useful to have. And nullify defense piercing effects, that's really amazing. Any unit that can nullify defense piercing is just so good because defense piercing is quite a big damage increase in PvP because of in arena shield render the piercing from that is quite high and it just it's a big difference when you nullify defense piercing effects is quite useful and i believe megius has this too and a few other units also have the same effect i know granadus does too they're pretty it's pretty pretty useful definitely when close to death very great restore hp hp recovery cap 40,000 once per wave so basically what this is is just another form of awaken or whatever but instead of giving a buff it just restores more hp so the hp recovery cap plus 40,000 just means that this is going to heal for more it's not giving a hp cap buff it just allows this effect to heal the unit more than the cap of 9999 so that is going to be quite useful especially if this unit if you build this unit to have a lot of health then this is definitely going to be a lot more useful than like an awaken or something probably because it's going to be healing for a lot more than an awaken would which is capped at 9999 i would think yeah the hp recovery cap is probably only to this restore hp buff and not anything else so yeah pretty interesting traits honestly if you look at what these traits give this trait one is mostly just for you know quality of life stuff and helping him survive and it's pretty nice usually units that are dps units have a lot of damage related traits but this guy only really has this one which is fire damage and damage cap hi Glad people are joining today. Quite an interesting unit, honestly. Well, we've only just started, like, almost 15 minutes ago. So, haven't managed to use him yet. But, honestly, if you want to hear my thoughts already, even though we haven't gone through his skills yet, I think he's going to be a really good unit. Definitely for PvP. In PvE... I don't know yet because I really got to test his skills out and see how fast they are but I think his damage caps are actually pretty high 
in PvE, but his hit counts are kind of okay. We just need to see how fast his skills are. But yeah, if you do like PvP, Arena, and Guild vs. Guild, then you're probably going to like him a lot. We're going to be pulling for him later today, so that's something we're going to do. Haven't got around to it yet. All I've been doing before the stream was farming the event bit and just checking out a few things. But yeah, these traits, pretty damn good. If you look at them, they're just mostly helping survivability. There is a bit of damage and damage cap here, but it's interesting because usually when you get a dual world unit, they're not very tanky. So onto his skills, great stuff here. He's got a new anima, which if this doesn't enforce the idea that he's a PvP unit, then I don't know what will, but all enemies magic cost MP plus 20%. And break plus 25%. Only boost MP cost in arena and guild battles. So, as you know, Summer Sarah has a similar. Well, someone has a similar amina. Yeah, Summer Sarah has the buff of the enemy attention drawn, and the that buff that is basically only applicable in arena and guild battles as well. And as you know, when a unit usually has a buff specifically aimed towards arena and guild battles they are usually a pvp focused unit so that's why i think that he's going to be a pvp unit because of this anima is literally telling you that this effect only applies in arena and guild battles so he must be good there right that's what i think but let's hope that he's good i think he's going to be good in arena like there's no way he's not going to be good especially since he's a god type as well and pretty tanky so, the anima by itself, though, I don't think it's that great. The magic cost plus 20% is kind of meh, you know, it's not that great, because if you're in guild battles, they're most likely going to have a lot of MP anyway. If they've been in the battle for quite a while, then the mages are going to have, like, almost full MP anyway, so... But in arena, potentially, but obviously it's only when the unit is alive. So if he dies, then this is just going to go away. But maybe it will help a tiny bit against fighting Renna, potentially, because it's going to make her healing cost more, but I don't know. I don't think it's going to help too much, honestly. The break plus 25%. If it's like a multiplicative buff or whatever, and it's timesing your overall break, so if you've got a high break unit and you have a bunch of breaker skills on, does it times all of that by 25% or, I don't know, or just add plus 25%? Because if it's just plus 25%, then it's not going to be much. But since there's an anima, maybe the break 25% would actually be significant, but I don't know. Attack up max, resolve up max, charisma up three, basic skills for stats, but they're pretty nice. Will armor, chance to nullify critical taken, that's pretty useful, honestly. He does have a lot of survivability skills now we're seeing right here. I'm actually quite impressed with what is here. Illusion, chance of evading physical attacks. So you have a chance of nullifying crits and also physical attacks, evading physical attacks. And then Night Zone 2, we've seen on Megius I believe. Enemy attention drawn plus 2, pretty nice. Frontal physical attack damage 15%, it's okay. And at damage cap 2000. Frontal physical damage taken minus 15%. It's pretty good. Honestly, I like this skill because it's kind of a new ish skill and we don't have it on many units. I'm pretty sure only Magus has this so far. So, this is like the second unit that has this skill. I think it's good. As long as you're just up in their face, then you're just going to get this bonus most of the time. So, that's great. Human shields. Love this. Damage from the humans minus 20%. Soldiers, knights, snipers, and sorcerers. Most of the arena units. So, that's great. Because if you think about it, though, we've got... Um, we've got Claude, who is a top-tier PvP unit, and just a top-tier unit in general, who most people are using right now in arena. So, since he's a human type, this will help tank against him. And this guy, Garland, is a god type. So... I don't know, but it seems like 
Garland may be a counter to Claude, but I don't know. I'm just thinking about it, because Garland is a god type. Claude is does more damage to soldiers mostly and the human types, so most of his damage buffs aren't going to apply to Garland, and Garland has a lot of, you know, things to help with survivability, so, you know, I'll probably try it. Auto Fort, I like seeing this, and Auto High Protection, High Protection, minus 35% physical damage buff all the time, love it, this is great, and Patience too. So, if I just stop here for a second, look at what we've got already. All of these skills from like resolve up max to patience to are all damage mitigation skills basically i mean royal armor illusion night zone 2 human shield auto for auto high protection all of this is really good like these are probably skills that i would expect on a tank unit but he's not a tank you know he's a dual world unit so i'm quite impressed with these skills so far now we get into the more damage focused skills i believe yeah fire drive Fire attack raise 3, so if he doesn't have high drive or mega drive, mega drive won't be on an arc yet, high drive will. I don't think high drive, fire high drive is on that many arcs though. Fire attack raise 3 is more damage cap, fire enhance, fire attack damage and special damage, whatever. Spirit breath, good, just to have that, because if you're using him with Renner, could be nice. Dual wield, yeah, obviously. Twin wield boost when equipped with two weapons of the same type. So this would basically mean you should be having two swords, but physical damage 10% and damage cap 2000 isn't too much. So you don't really need two swords, honestly. You can have one sword and the second weapon can be something else because missing out on 10% damage and 2000 damage cap isn't really a big deal. So if you want, you can put on a sword and Trishula for PvE content and you can just use them anywhere. And it doesn't really matter on losing 2,000 damage cap. But if you want his maximum damage cap, then you should probably focus on hitting their weakness and using two swords. That probably be the best way to get the highest damage cap. But for maximum damage, you don't really need two swords. I would recommend one sword and something else, probably a machine. When no armor is equipped, defense plus 20%. So he's got dual wields, so he's not going to have an armor. So basically, he's always going to have plus 20% more defense, which is basically equivalent to, like, defense up max, plus defense up one or something, basically. So that's pretty good. More defense is going to help. That's why he has so much defense. It's pretty good. Sword boost and giga boost, great. 30% damage, 3000 damage cap. So one thing I want you to remember is... He doesn't have sword mega boost. That's a big thing that I want you to remember for all in a little bit once we get to the arc. Obviously you should probably know by now but yeah sword mega boost. Not here. Special boost 2, more special damage, quick trigger. I like quick trigger honestly it's very good. Mostly for PvP obviously but randomly getting a skill 3 or a skill 2 for this guy is going to be really handy definitely. Decoy, love that. Decoy is basically just a must-have skill on a unit that you use in PvP. Basically, if you're using a unit in PvP, you must have Decoy, so that's saving 7 SC right there. Very useful. Cloak of Majesty, take less damage from non-boss enemies, which does apply in PvP. So, basically, in Arena and Guild Battles, you're always going to take 10% less damage from this, so that's really useful. And... Another one, chance for critical damage taken minus 40%. Great. You know, there's a lot of stuff here that helps survivability, which is quite impressive. Like, it's quite a unique unit. It really is. It's like he's trying to be a tanky single wield unit, but he uses two swords, or he uses at least two weapons. So, interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, parry with the royal armor gonna be real nice for crits gonna be great and then still some a lot more skills down here great adamantium this one's nice too when near death defense slash mind plus 30 percent 
based on how low HP is, maximum of 50%. It's okay, basically, if you're low on health, you're just going to get more defense and mind. It's okay, kind of equivalent to patience, two and whatever, technically, so that's nice. Self-healing, continuous HP regeneration effect, that's okay. And heal one random basic stats every 20 seconds could be useful. Like, if you get inflicted with stun in 19 seconds, then one second later, it should remove it. So, if it times, times it like that perfectly, then it could be really handy. Prefect of God, obviously, like, if you remember, Prefect of God Mia, like I said... This is a Prefect of God skill, so every Prefect of God unit is going to have this skill. Anti-type damage cap, 3000 to non-God type enemies. So, the problem with this is I don't think he has any anti... I don't think he has any Slayers. I don't think... I didn't see any Slayers in his kit, so I believe he doesn't have any, so that doesn't really matter at all. But, when taking attacks with an anti-God type effect, damage minus 40% quite useful that's going to come in handy and that really does enforce the idea that every prefect of god unit that's going to be released is going to be a god type because when taking attacks with an anti-god type effect obviously they're going to be a god type right so yeah quite excited to see more prefect of god units in the future and now these four i believe are unique skills for garlands like, a few of these were unique, but they were up here, but the ones down here, probably specific to him. Sigil of Protection. Continuous wall magic for the attributes of weapons equipped. Unit only excluding no attributes. So, basically, if you equip a fire sword, then you're going to get a wall magic for that attribute. I am a little bit confused because of the way that walls work. So, if you have a fire sword... You would expect to get firewall, wouldn't you? That's what I would expect. Because it says continuous wall magic for the attributes of weapons equipped. So if you're equipping a fire weapon, then you're going to get fire magic wall, right? right? It should be. So if you have do two different elements of swords, or it, for example, if you have a fire sword plus trishula, which is going to be light, then you're going to have two different wall effects on him. At all times which is nice so that's just a little bonus i think battle start give unit a defense slash mind plus 50 percent buff for 15 seconds you know people really thought this was very funny because this basically is equivalent to like theopolis which does the exact opposite which is defense and mind minus 50 percent for 15 seconds so this kind of nullifies both of those doesn't it so this is great, really good, uh, I believe it's not going to stack with Fort, but once this buff runs out, I think Fort will take over, that's what I think, so, very nice, I like this, this is going to help, especially in Arena, because the first 10 seconds or so of Arena battles are very important, it's just both teams spamming skills, trying to kill the other team, so, this will help with that. Now, Final Bind, this skill is also quite an interesting one. I have no idea how good this is going to be, but I'm hoping it's good. When unit HP hits zero from the attack of an enemy far enough away, then it deals fire damage to that enemy five times. Boost damage amount based on unit's max HP. So, this is a very interesting skill, and I just want to talk about it a little bit. So, when this unit dies from the an enemy that killed this unit, so let's say you're using him on your defense team in guild battles, the attacking team usually uses a mage, so if the mage kills him, then he's going to deal fire damage to the mage five times. I'm That sounds really good to me, because if... The damage is pretty high or if it's strong enough to kill a mage then I think this is going to be amazing and could be hilarious because he could just be doing a bunch of damage 
and if the enemy uses magic he's just going to kill him when he dies which is just really funny so I'm hoping that the damage from this is strong but I don't know we're going to have to test this out because it says it boosts the damage amount based on his max HP so if you want this to do more damage you're going to want to stack a bunch of HP ups on him something to think about but since it's a fire attack, all of the fire damage boost that he gets to fire attack should boost this damage too. So that would be nice. And then the final one is a longer one. Non-attribute weakness damage taken minus 20%, excluding no attribute. Basically just take 20% less damage from weaknesses. So if you're getting hit from ice, which he's weak to, then you're going to take 20% less damage, which is kind of useful. When hitting an absolute weakness with a fire, physical attack, damage 50% and damage cap 15,000. This is pretty huge because 50% more damage is going to help quite a bit in, obviously PvP is going to help a lot. 50% more damage, very useful. The damage cap, since he's dual wield, 15,000 damage cap is going to be a lot. So you kind of really want to focus on hitting the enemy fire weakness if you can. And what this means is units like Shift the Lies is going to do well with him because she has an anima that reduces the enemy fire resistance. So having ways to reduce fire resistance in your team is going to be very useful with this guy. Just keep that in mind. You may be disappointed with his damage if you're not hitting an absolute weakness in PvE. I think that would be the case. I believe his damage cap is around 65... 60 ish thousand damage cap in total so if you're missing out on 15,000 then that's going to go down to like 50 ish or 45 ish and that isn't too impressive compared to the current dps units we've got so it's okay considering that that's his base damage cap and we can increase it from other ways other units and equipments and stuff so that's still pretty solid so that's all of his skills Sixth Enhance, more damage cap, special damage cap, less physical damage and magic damage. Pretty basic, but honestly, he looks very good. Like, if you really look at what he has, a lot of this isn't really damage. It's mostly helping him survive and tanking physical damage. So, for that reason... He's definitely going to be useful in PvP, especially, well, both PvP, Arena probably, because Arena is mostly physical damage, so I'm hoping he can tank the current best DPS units in Arena, but I don't know. I'm hoping he's tank tanky enough to survive. I don't think he's going to be a tank, but it's probably going to be in between a tank and a DPS. Probably going to play a role of like a... Um, someone a single world unit like well probably not Claude depends on how you build him though but very interesting unit honestly looks very exciting to me because he's quite unique he's definitely the first type of unit that we've gotten like this he's a dual world unit but he has a lot of skills that a single world unit would have so he's kind of like a single world dual world unit <laughs> technically because to me, single wood units are usually pretty tanky because they can usually have an armor or clothes that help them survive. So, sounds very good to me. His damage, yeah look, the trait 2 is fire damage, which will apply to the final bind damage. Well, it will. the, the damage from his trait 2 will apply to this because it's fire damage. That's going to be nice. And then when hitting attribute weakness with fire physical attack, this probably won't count as physical, will it? I have no idea. Absolutely no idea if this will count as physical or not. You could hope, because if it's not physical, then the sword boost and stuff isn't going to help. I don't know. We'll have to see, but just from looking at everything that he has, looks very good. Looks very fun too. Looks very cool as well. So there's a lot of good stuff about him. I'll probably talk a bit later on comparing him to 
Zekus, Forgate, and which one you should be pulling for. But again, it's just up to you at the end of the day. But I'll probably give my recommendations later. But let's leave him for now and have a look at the arc next because that's another interesting thing to look at. But honestly, I'm mostly interested in Garland because he does look very interesting and like he's going to be a very strong unit. So I'm looking forward to getting him today. I'll, I'm definitely going to get him. I'm probably not going to get this. I don't think I will. So this is the arc. Guard Dog Garland. Looks very cool. He's got like a... Um, I would say that's like a tiger face. And I love tigers, so... Or is it a wolf or something? Or I know it's a guard dog, but... You know... Whatever. So, stats, HP, strength, defense, damn. That's a lot of defense. <laughs> Pretty good stats, right? So... This is another one of those UR arcs that doesn't have a arc skill. But... I've heard a few people say that the arc trait isn't that impressive and it should have had an arc skill because the arc trait doesn't really make up for it and I kind of agree with that but let's have a look because I I wasn't too excited about this trait when I read it a few times but let's have a look defense plus 25 percent 25 percent more defense could help a bit kind of equivalent to a defense up max kind of I think something battle start give ally with lowest defense excluding the unit uh guard dogs protection buff so it's a unique buff which boosts the deep which boosts the unit's defense boost defense by 20 percent of units defense before battle start so i believe what this is going to do i don't know if it boosts if it's 20 percent of the unit's defense meaning the unit that equips this arc so for example if you use someone that has high defense like ruto with let's say he has 4000 defense for example at the start of battle before battle start then assuming this will give a buff to the lowest defense ally that gives 20 percent of 4000 of his defense so that's what I'm gathering, which sounds okay, it sounds decent, but it's kind of like a budget version of Shift Gorm's protection buff as well. His defended buff buffs defense and HP, it's kind of like a budget version of that, so it's kind of like a weaker version of that and only boosts defense. It's It could be decent, but like... It kind of, I don't know where I would see this being used, honestly. Maybe there could be some good ideas. Lose buff when a unit or the ally is incapacitated. Makes sense. Kind of similar to Shift Gorm's buff as well. Is if Gorm dies or the ally dies. Well, the good thing about Shift Gorm's buff is if the ally dies, then it is going to apply it again once more at least. So it is kind of just a worse version of Shift Gorm's buff, Defended buff. Each weapon equipped, strength 10% and skill damage cap 1750. So I like that part of the trait quite a lot. Because if you think about it, if you're using this on a dual wield unit, then they're going to get 3500 skill damage cap, I believe. Which sounds very good. And that is on the higher end like most of the UR arcs that have damage cap increases to an element like fire for instance they usually give 3500 damage cap so that is equivalent it's pretty good the only problem that i'm seeing with this trait is that it doesn't really give damage it gives more strength right but strength can't really compare to damage modifiers at all so it's just what I feel about this trait is it's just not the best at anything and it's just kind of, you know, you've got to really think of who you would use this on and what the boost you would get from this is. So let's say you're going to use this on a DPS unit. 
the only thing the DPS unit is going to get is basically 20% strength and 3500 skill damage cap if they're using two weapons and uh, some more defense is mostly it so well yeah now I think about it basically what this trait gives is just defense and strength and damage cap so that by itself isn't really that much so yeah you can see why I don't really like this trait because it's just kind of a bit underwhelming you know because defense buffs Defense buffs are good, but the way this defense buff is, is just, like, I mean, I could see it being useful. Let me think, though. If you're using this in a round 2 defense team in guild battles, that's where I can see this being useful. Because then you can put this on your tank, like Ruto, because he has, like, the highest defense. Put this on Ruto, or a tank. And it will give your second unit the defense buff. So that could be like Renna or someone. So an idea, you could put this on a Shift Gorm and the second unit can be Renna. Renna's going to get the defended buff from Gorm as well as the Guard Dog's protection buff from this arc trait. That sounds pretty strong to me and that's like the only use that I can see from this being useful with a defense buff. That's kind of it. Because since it's the ally with the lowest defense, if you're using a full team of four units, then it's probably going to give the buff to someone that you don't care about getting the defense buff, you know. So, yeah. I think it's an okay trait, but I don't see myself using it very much, honestly. The damage caps, I could see myself using it on dual wield units for the damage cap, potentially. But, you know... Not that excited about the trait. The learnable skills get more interesting though. Ardor, Strength, Down, Evasion. Dreadful Glare is a new one. I think this one's nice. When taking physical damage, enemy strength minus 5% and then take damage. This is going to be great. I don't know how much damage mitigation it gives, but basically to me it sounds like you're just going to take a little bit less damage from physical attacks. So that sounds decent. Sounds okay. For 3FC, I think it would be worth shoving this on a tank or something in Arena, maybe. I think that would be good. I would like to use it, honestly. Auto Protection. Guard Dog Scale Plate is another new one. HP Defense 7%. That's okay. And Critical Damage taken minus 10%. This, you know, 9SC is too, too expensive. I don't think it's that great. Like, 7% HP and Defense is kind of low. It's not that much. And 10% less critical damage taken. Garland doesn't really need to take less critical damage since he already has a few skills to help with that. So I don't see myself ever using this skill. I can see myself using this, but definitely not this. I don't think I'll ever use this. And here we get to the final skill. The one that everyone's going to be hyping over is Sword Mega Boost. Yeah, wow. Claps. When a sword is equipped, physical damage 30% and damage cap 2000. Yeah, so sword mega boost is the selling point of this arc, guaranteed. It's definitely the point. <laughs> if you want to get this arc, that's because of sword mega boost. Don't lie to me. That is why you want to get this, because of sword mega boost. That's the only reason. There's no other reason why you would want to get this. Literally. So, I'll tell you why this is so big. If you don't already know, the majority of units have a sword, at least one sword, and if you also don't know, usually the best weapons in the game are swords, and we have a lot of swords in this game, so the fact that sword mega boost is now on an arc as a learnable skill means that you can now put on sword mega boost on units that don't have sword mega boost and give them more damage and damage caps, so this also means you could put on uh, I'm trying to give an example, but it's kind of difficult. Sword boosts and a sword mega boost on a unit that dual wields something. I, I mean, I can't think of an example, but I know for sure this is going to be very handy for a couple units. But since there are so many good swords, this value for this skill is just quite high, so... 
honestly, this URR isn't terrible. I think it's good because it's a URR. Arc, it's still good, but the trait isn't that impressive to me. The learnable skills are amazing because of Sword Mega Boost, but would I get it specifically for Sword Mega Boost? No, it's not worth pulling just to get Sword Mega Boost. You could do a few pulls, but it's not worth pitting it. That's a different story. 400 pulls just to get Sword Mega Boost. Don't do that. It's stupid. And I, I tell you that. I tell you now, I'm not going to be doing that. There's no chance that I'm going to be pulling 400 times just to get a Sword Mega Boost to give 2,000 damage cap on a unit. It's just not worth that. Arkeef Rewards. Eh. It's a Fire Sword, but I looked at it earlier and it wasn't great. Special damage, 30%. Two weapons equipped, special damage cap 2,500. So, this is only really going to see use on like Alice and maybe someone else, but just Alice and Alice, and that's it. That's like the only unit. So, this sword's kind of like I won't use it much at all because it's only for special damage and damage caps and I usually don't care about that but if you're focusing on maximum special damage and damage caps and doing as much damage as possible with specials then this will be useful definitely but this will probably be the best sword to use in the game for specials but like you don't need it at all because special damage cap isn't going to help too much if you're using someone like, um, someone that has single wield specials that doesn't have true dual wield or anything for their specials isn't really going to benefit from much from this. As you know, damage caps are more important on units that have double the hit counts like Linus and dual wield units just benefit the most from damage cap increases. Single wield units don't really need them too much. So, it's a good arc. Honestly, it's not bad. I like it. It's just, I'm not going to pity it at all, because these are great skills, but it's not like you need to have them. There's no way you need to have them, you don't. It's just, it would be nice to have them, like, more damage and damage cap, yeah, would be great. But 12 SC is kind of expensive, and it's only really going to help a tiny bit. And I've realised that you don't need to have the highest damage cap possible. You don't need to, because the content that's in the game doesn't require you to have that ridiculous damage cap so you really don't need the best possible highest damage cap it's not something you're ever going to need ever so it's not that important honestly even though i would probably use these two skills quite a bit uh, makes me want it but you know not worth pulling 400 times just get it is it no so, this is a good banner, I have to say that now, because Garland is a very good unit, seems like he's going to be very strong for PvP, he's a very cool unit and he's quite unique, so I like him quite a lot, he's very cool, and the arc as well, another good arc, can't complain with it, Sword of Mega Boost is going to be the main win that you're going to get from that, so, good banner. I guess while I'm here, I can talk about comparing this banner to Zekka's banner. So, if you've been waiting up until now, if you've waited two weeks, then you've got time to decide which to pull on, I guess. So, this obviously has Zekka's foregate, which I've had a lot of testing with now, so I can give my opinions on him a lot more. I'm probably going to say that Lillehammer definitely has a better art trait that I can see myself using a lot more. The learnable skills, stuff, mega boosts, archive rewards, you know, because of the art trait and the archive rewards being so good, that's why I think Lillehammer's a more value arc than Guard Dog Garland. So, if you had a choice and you just want to get the best then I would definitely recommend Zekka's banner instead of Garland just because I know how good Zekka's is right now and if you've got Linus then 
you just have to get Zekus Horgate. There's no questions about it. Because, as you saw, Linus with Zekus is just like the best combination right now. It's ridiculously strong. Zekus, right, let me just show you something real quick. My build for Zekus, I was using this team for the time trial. It's kind of terrible, not going to lie. I didn't really push that hard, but I'm using Zekus as a support with Linus. So you could do this. You could just have his charisma on and some kind of glass record or keen eye if you've got one of those two and some debuffs and just that's kind of it or some healing or whatever and then he's going to be able to do his ether resonance and give him maximum mp as well and he's just going to be a support unit to buff Linus. so that's what i've been doing and it actually works incredibly well so yeah i think Zekka's four gate banner is definitely better than Prefect of God Garland, but they're both strong. They're both good banners. You can't go wrong with either of them. If you have, I mean, if you have Linus, then you're probably more incentivized to go for this banner. You're probably more willing. You should probably pull for this instead, because Linus plus Zekka's four gate is just a combination that you really shouldn't miss out on. So yeah, but if you like PvP, you like Prefect of God Garland, or if you've already got Zekus, then I guess you can pull for this banner instead. If you have Zekus already, and you're missing the UR, then you're better off pulling on this one, obviously, because pulling for a UR is just kind of rare. So, that's where I'm at right now. They're both good banners, and honestly, it's kind of difficult to think of which banner's better, but I have to stick with Zekus Fallgate, because I his value with Linus is just so incredibly high. It just makes Linus too overpowered so I can't say to not get Zekus it's just that good if you've got Linus if you don't then his value probably goes down a bit it depends on how much you need a mage so yeah that's kind of where I'm at or you could get Linus in the future that's the thing so those are the banners right now uh, there's one more thing I actually I'm gonna look at it now the Halloween gacha this one, uh, I already used my tickets, basically every, yeah, all of these four arcs are in here, I already got the arc, um, can't really view it here right now, can I, well, I'll go to the arc anyway, because I did get it today, because it's just, it's just free, all you got to do is the event, and you should be able to get it, so, I, since it's free, I don't really need to talk about this, too much I'm just just gonna show it anyway light attack damage to horror type enemies creature undead and spirit plus 15% this is an interesting one because it's 15% damage before SC to those specific enemies this could have some use honestly so I think that's good spirit saber is an interesting one too this could see some use but these two are kind of specific you know, they're two specific enemy types, so they're okay, and this arc is free, so everyone should be able to get it. The arc Reward, reward, I don't think it's that special, was it? When unit has sorcerer type, magic attack damage plus 7%, and magic attack damage taken minus 7%, it's whatever. You know, none of, the, none of this is really special. I think it's mostly the learnable skills that could potentially help, but since it's free, you just get it like there's no reason not to because you just farm the event you should be able to get it hopefully i mean there's probably a chance you don't but it's quite small so trading space next we got to look at garland's paid equipments i haven't looked at them yet so event trading space is still here there's a new event it's a halloween focused event you can get these baskets that's what you used to get the Halloween arcs, garland prisms, god relic prism shards, just get all this stuff, I like god relic prisms, they're, they're great, I like them a lot, so, paid equipments, he has a sword and an accessory, I was really expecting them to pull another 
50 credential paid on us again, but they didn't, so I'm happy about that. First of all, let's look at the sword. I don't know anything about these at all, so this is going to be my first time looking at them. I'm hoping they help more with PvP and survivability, that's why I'm hoping. So, Fire Attitude Sword, Strength Defense makes sense. The defense is pretty solid for a sword, honestly. So, the trait is always what you're looking for. Fire Attack Damage 20% and Damage Cap 2000. That's just a basic sword, like, I wouldn't get a sword just for that. If attacked during a skill, units defense plus 20% and take damage. That's interesting. Is that good though? I mean, since he's got resistance to interruption when using skills, this is useful. But how useful is it? I mean, it depends because if you're getting smacked around a lot and you're not able to use a skill, then this won't be that useful but since it is some survivability i think it is going to be useful for pvp at least a little bit but it's i i mean it's okay i think it's okay it's not anything crazy though accessory defense 140 okay okay the stats just 140 defense and that's it okay you could have given hp as well that would have been great Defense plus 10%, great. Enemy attention drawn plus 1, nice. Okay, while wall magic is cast on the unit, damage from target attribute attacks minus 15% more, excluding no attribute. So, basically, this basically gives him a equivalent to a high wall instead. So, the effect that Garland has on him already is giving a wall to the element of his weapon which is going to be 20% less damage taken to that element so this will basically turn that into a high wall instead and turn it into minus 35% damage taken instead so that's good honestly defense enemy attention drawn plus one and 15% more to the wall effect it's pretty solid I mean None of these are incredibly good, so you don't need them, but if you want him to do his best in PvP, then yes, you should probably get them. Um, but the question is which one? I mean, it depends. It, this is... I would probably recommend the sword, honestly, because this is useful everywhere, because it gets damage and damage cap. And that defense, useful. The accessory doesn't give damage, so this just helps for survivability. More defense, enemy attention drawn, plus one. If you don't want him to draw more enemy attention, then you probably won't want to use this accessory. But it's pretty solid, honestly. So, I, it's a hard decision, but if you were to use him in PvP... Maybe the accessory first. I mean, I don't think there's a wrong option here, honestly, because they're both good. But if you've already got good swords and good weapons, then you probably don't need this. And you should probably get the accessory if you have less options for accessories. So it's up to you, but I'm probably just going to get both of them. I'll probably get both, but if you were to choose one, uh, just uh, look at what you have on your account and kind of decide from there. If you're a newer player, then you probably shouldn't be spending money on this anyway, but if you do have 20, 25 credentials, then it's up to you. If you only care about PBE and bosses and stuff like that, then just get the sword. That's the easiest option, because you get damage and damage cap. But this accessory doesn't really help you in PBE, so that's just the thing you've got to think about. If you don't care about arena and guild battles, then you don't need this accessory. That's kind of it. So... Yeah, I would definitely get both of these if you have 50 credentials, because with Zekka's Foregate, I didn't get his robe or whatever it was, just because I felt like it wasn't that great, wasn't worth getting, but these are worth having at least, so I'm probably going to get both of those now. I do have a few medals just because there was a pack in the shop, and I did a few singles, but it was kind of it.
So I do want to do summons in a second. Yeah, this pack right here, I think is pretty good. It has three God Relic Prisms and a Temple Ticket and some other stuff. So I thought it was pretty good. Let's just do summons now. Then uh, the plan for today is I want to get Garland. That's a guarantee. I want to get Garland at least with his paid weapon and accessory. And then hopefully we get the Ark. But I'm not going to pity it. But I will try to get it. So, basically what that's going to mean is, I'm going to try to spend crystals to get both, but I'm not going to spend everything, and I will try to save at least a little bit. So, that's kind of the plan. Let's use this temple ticket first. My guess, temple ticket, since it's a ticket, it's probably not going to give anything at all, is it? The rear with a gold is usually a good sign, but it's not always... I've been trolled like this before, so I'm not getting any hopes up unless I see a red with enough animations. Animations is what I need. One is not enough. There is a red, though, with one animation. At least there's something. There's definitely only one red. There's no... Yeah, obviously there's a dupe. I mean... Zoglas. Whatever, but the first... The first orb that we got today is a red, so I guess that's something, but I wish that was something new. I'm still missing Logia's, Shift Logia's SSR arc, so that could appear, and if it does, I'll be quite sad. I'll be very sad. And his banner's still up, but I'm not pulling for him, I'm skipping him because I don't want him at all. Let's do the step gacha. We're going to be doing step gacha until we get enough credentials to get his paid weapons. Well, both of his paid equipments. This is probably a skip. Yeah. Definitely nothing there. Go until we get 50 credentials and then do some free crystals and hope we get lucky. That's the plan. We didn't manage to pull the arc from Zekus Forgate Banner. We had to pity that from the step gacha, so I'm hoping we get better luck this time, but so far it doesn't look like it, but we've only just started. The free temple, what I'm looking forward to. This six pull, probably not going to give it anything, my guess. It's going to give one or two golds, and the rest are going to be blues. That's my guess, in this pull. Yeah, I knew it. There's a blue, yeah, there's nothing there. One gold, kind of predicted that. The free temple, I'm hoping at least it gives a red, one red at least, because geez, should be getting more reds. It does feel like to me, we don't have many fire units, but I don't know. The rear with a gold is usually a good sign, but not always. Like earlier, we got one animation with this same setup and we got a red so if we get at least one animation I would expect at least a red if we do not I'm just gonna be very confused at least an animation you can't not give one there's one there is a red I was kind of doubting that for a second I bet there's only one yeah two something new please nah obviously not two arcs though <laughs> You can hope one of them's going to be the UR, but it's just not going to happen, is it? Well, got to continue the step gacha then. Hopefully I don't have to pity anything today. If we at least get a tiny bit lucky enough to get something, then that'd be fine. Don't be a blue. It's a gold, okay, there's something. I usually think a gold showing up gives more luck than a blue, but in this case... It should. Yeah, there's a red. That's, like, that's what I was thinking. No actual animation yet. It's probably only one. I always expect one. You can't expect more than what you're going to get. Wait. That is... That's not what I was thinking it was going to be. That's the arc. I didn't think it was going to turn blue. That's great. I'm really happy with that. As you heard, I wasn't going to pity this, so this is a really good win for me. 
honestly. This was going to be the arc that I was going to skip, so I'm really happy with that. That's great. I love that. Definitely luckier than the Zekka's Fallgate banner so far. Now we just need to get Garland. That's the one thing we need to get now, so that's good. Let's keep going here until we get Garland, because I Garland's going to be very fun. Especially with his arc. I'm looking forward to it, I really am. Come on, at least a red here. I don't think so. Now, I'm just going to speed run this one. I'm going to watch it anyway, but it's nothing. No reds in this temple. The reds are gone because of the UR arc. Expect it. I'll watch it anyway, but it's not... Yeah, like I said, it's... even when there's three animations, nobody showing up and it being a blue is just not going to be anything. We just need... We just need Garland. Garland has a higher rate up than the Ark, so there's like... Yeah, Garland's great. Be happy if you have him, because he's a really good unit. I haven't tested him, though. Come on. Nobody's showing up again. Jeez. Skip for me. I mean, it's a gold. I, I, I'm not gonna hurry. I'm gonna watch it, just in case, but I don't think there's gonna be anything here. We will be testing Garland. Oh, there's a red. Wow. I did not think there would be. Can it be Garland? No. Obviously not. Another arc. Okay. I want to keep an eye on how many credentials I have. So, we should be at 1, 2, 3, maybe 40, 41, I think. Let me check. And then once we get 50, I will do some free crystals, I think, to hopefully get him. Yeah, 41. Just need one more temple now. If we can get Garland right now, this will be the best scenario that can happen. So, let's hope. Let's hope. The rear, but, is a blue. I kind of expected that. That's why I said but, because I knew. It needs enough animations. If there's no animations, it's not going to be a red at all. Zero or one is not going to be enough. It's going to be a gold if it's a zero or one. A two or a three is a maybe. One, two is a maybe. But uh, not guaranteed. Yeah, like I said. One pull to get him is pretty great, honestly. <laughs> Getting anything new. Getting anything early is always a win. So, I could just pity him right now, but I'm going to hope we get him from free crystals. So, let's do a couple free crystal pulls and hopefully we can get him soon because that would be great. That would be perfect. Zekus, don't be a blue. It's a blue. Okay, well, uh, there's nothing here, but I'm going to watch it anyway. If there's three animations, there's a small chance of a red, but nah, there's not. No, nah, I'm not even going to bother. I knew it. Yeah, definitely the luck went down as soon as we got the UR. That's a, that's a given. That's definitely the case. Uh, the rear. Blue. Oh, blue. We don't like blue. Unless it's a dark blue, but we've already got that today. One. No. You know, I'm starting to think that we're not going to get Garland from Free Crystals, so... Uh, probably going to have to pity Garland, aren't we? Hopefully not. Hopefully we get him now. Now, now, now. It's another blue. Why? I swear, we've done a lot of temples and there haven't been any reds at all. I'm going to skip this. I'm not going to skip this. I'm going to skip this. Yeah, why? How is there no... We're going to do the strat. We're going to go to the Singapore strat. It, I swear it builds up luck or something. I'm not crazy. If you do singles until you get a red, you, it should give more reds, right? You'd think. Oh, oh, the only thing we need is Garland, so... He just needs to show his face on the screen any second now it's gonna happen you could, what, we, we haven't got a red in so long like this is ridiculous at this point but 
at least we got the arc, so I can't complain, but I can because I'm allowed. The reds are gone, they just disappeared. You know, I'm probably gonna go back to the step gancher in a second because I don't think the game wants me to pull anything new with free crystals or crystals in general. <laughs> Come on, now, do it. No. I believe we should still have 100,000 or so free crystals left, so... I'm gonna check in a second. No. Okay, well, this is starting to be depressing again. It went up so well, it was so well, and then... Now it's gone terribly wrong. Okay. Yeah, we still got plenty of free crystals to use so I don't need to worry yet 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 is the big word big yet I like being at the at around the 90k mark don't be blue gold okay feels luckier than a blue but big but you need two or three animations to give a red that's a given. No, it's not gonna give any. Great. This is. This is, uh. I don't know. I don't know what this is. The gold again. You're not gonna troll me again. I uh, won't let you. I'm just gonna press this button and go. One. Two. Three. Yeah, there has to be a red now. There's no, no chance. Don't be an arc animation. It is. Damn it. Well, it has to be two. No. Well, I'm gonna do one more. I think. I don't know. Nobody's showing up. Great. Okay, I'm gonna skip anyway. Yeah, like I knew it. This is the worst reds that I've ever seen. I've never. We don't have many reds at all. We should be at... 90 something... 92... Yeah... I'll do a few singles then, and then I'll go back to the step gatcher and finish that off. I should have enough for the step gatcher to get Garland from there. So... Get a red. No. Oh, we were. I swear, this is the least amount of reds that I've seen in a while. Like, we usually get quite a lot of reds, but. No. Well. Wow. Okay. You know, more step gacha summons is more credentials for prisms, so that's not the worst thing in the world. Yeah, I should stop now. I'm gonna go stamp gacha again. I think I'll save the rest of the free crystals for the moment. Depends. I'm at least happy with what we've got so far. Yeah, I could do three more singles. That would leave me at 90k exactly. Or... or so I already told myself today that I will get garden no matter what happens, so... Yeah, we can get both of those. We have 161. Uh, you know, the, I could do 90 pulls and get him with free crystals instead, which may be something I could consider doing. Maybe. If there's not a red in this pool, I am going to, I don't know, press skip. Yeah, there's a red. No doubt about it. Like I knew. Don't be an arc. It's only one. Well, another dupe. <laughs> oh, uh, the dupes are crazy. At least there was a red, so I was starting to lose hope on reds for a second. Yeah, because one, two, three, four, five. Uh, 
I could get guaranteed or free crystals instead. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm trying to be smart with my crystals. Don't be a okay. Three up. Good. That's good. This looks good. What about the animation? Does it look good? Mm, one. Uh, another one in the same spot is going to be another dupe of an art that I've already got. Yeah. Well, Mia, really? Okay. Ah, uh, I'm just thinking. Or the smartest way to get Garland. Yeah, we still haven't pulled Garland yet, which is very sad, but... At least we got the arc, so I'm kind of happy with that. I'm happy with that at least. We'll get both of these, definitely. 100%. And then we can get one prism. I think it's going to be great as a PvP unit, so prisms, I would gladly take prisms. I could do enough to get 250. Or... Stepcatcher instead. That's the question, I don't know. The answer to yet. One, two, one, two. Two hundred and... Ah. Uh, trying to be smart here, but I don't know how smart I am to make this work. Because I would need five, six, seventy pulls. Twenty one thousand free crystals or well I could do twenty one thousand free crystals and get him or three six nine twelve thousand paid crystals. And I would also get two you know, it's the smarter thing to do I think for me is probably use the free crystals. Because twenty one thousand free crystals I can just get back from stories and stages and you get some free crystals when you buy paid crystals so that's not a big deal i think that's a smarter play for me so yeah i think the smartest thing to do is to do the free crystals instead so i'm gonna do that take that approach maybe it'll work better or just not at all the rear can you give me garland no you won't you definitely won't. No, I don't think it's ready. Yeah, I knew it. This is, that was bad. This should be 190. Now we're at 200. The rear. You've showed up a lot today, but haven't given that much luck. Gold. Gold is at least better than the blue, but you need to give animations. I press escape by accident. Never mind. I'm starting to lose all hope on reds, like... Jeez. The reds are just non-existent. Well, whatever. We're gonna get him now. Not in this pool, but like... From the treading space. I was hoping we would get him from those <laughs> whatever I, I I wasn't counting so you know this is unlucky on Garland but I am not going to complain because we got the arc so I think it's okay 21 yes okay 21 31 It doesn't want to give any reds at all, anymore, at all, one, two, okay, at least there was one, just one, 
this should be the last temple, and then we can do singles, and then we get Garland for guaranteed. Great. Well, I'm not going to bother with Lilibet, because... Yeah, Lilibet. Great. Lilibet used to be good luck in the past, I remember. Lilibet gave a couple of UR arcs to me in the past. That was great, but... I believe we do nine singles, and then we get him from the trading space. Yes, we can do that. Great. That's nice. At least I'm being smarter with crystals. We'll just skip these. I can count to nine. One. Seven. At least we didn't get a dupe of the UI yet. Uh-huh, yeah, there's gonna be no reds. None. Great. I, 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 talking and counting, I can't do those two at the same time, can I? Oh. Okay, well. There he is, eventually. I, I should be happy, but I'm not. I mean... This is fine. But, you know, you can't trade 250 for another copy, so, yeah, it's like pretty sad, but, you know, that's fine. That's fine. At least we got him eventually, but, you know, the game telling me that I don't have to pity anything, so... Alright, I mean, I'm a bit mixed emotions with this, but it wasn't too bad. <laughs> well, the luck for the unit was terrible, but let's have a look at him now. Definitely going to be trying him out very soon. I was using V, try and get account XP. Uh, yeah, let's put him in here. So, Garland right here. So, we've got Prefect of God Nia, who's a god type. And then we've got Prefect of God Mawana, who's a god type. And then we got the third one, who's Garland and a god type. He's right here. Great. Well. We did the worst part. Is the summons. It's always the worst part. But. At least we got both. So I can't really complain. And I won't. Because I'm happy with. I said I wasn't going to get the arc. And we got it. So I'm going to call that a win for me. Even though we had to pity, kind of had to pity Garland, it's not the worst thing in the world. I've had worse things happen than this. And getting the arc is actually pretty lucky, so that's fine. Six hundred ten XP. I love that. It's quite a bit. So. Let's do 5th Enhance, we'll get all of these skills learned, and we will try them out soon. Grant us the power to save this kingdom and its subjects. So, if you don't know the story behind Garland, I'm not going to spoil anything because it's in the news story, but basically, if you don't know who he is, he's just a another one of those brainwashed units. So, he's a king, and he was brainwashed by Lilaha, goddess. Again, it's like kind of similar to Prefect of God Mia, in the sense of he was brainwashed. So it's just another another one of those brainwashed units, like Prefect of God Mia. Let's have a look at equipment in seconds. 
let's learn the rest of the skills here first, and then look at equipment. Ward is less fire damage taken. Sure, why not? 1% less fire damage taken. Scarlet Soul. Yeah, you know, I'm, de I'm definitely going to be having some fun with the arc, even though I talked down on it earlier, saying the trait is kind of not great. I still stand by it. The trait isn't that great. But I can see a little bit of use with it. And the main good thing about this arc is the learnable skills, so definitely going to have some fun with that later. But I want to focus mainly on Garland for most of the rest of this stream, I guess. Uh, it's probably not going to be too long, but I can't try him in Arena or anything yet because he's a completely new unit. He's not a shift. If you think about it, we haven't had a complete new unit in a while. Most of the recent units have been shift units. If you don't include collab units, we've only had DOH units that have been shift units recently, so... Interesting. Let's go to equipment now. So, as you know, he's a dual wield unit. And he needs at least one sword. His second one could be anything, but it could be a sword. But it doesn't need to be. He can't equip a machine, which is annoying, but let's have a look. First weapon, definitely going to be a sword. Most people should have a lot of sword options, so the first option should be fine. And if you remember, he has a skill that gives him a wall effect, but it doesn't apply to non-attributes. So if you're using Pure Blade Muramasa, then you're not going to get any wall effects. So that's one thing to think about, is you should probably try to get a fire sword. So if we just look at fire swords first of all, obviously you've got his paid. That's the easiest option, which I will use, but... God played Kagusuchi is a probably the best sword that you should probably use on him. I'd recommend this. If you don't have his paid sword, this is probably the... Well, this is the best option for damage, because it gives crit rate as well, and... 25% fire physical damage. That's kind of the only good fire sword, honestly. Uh, yeah, that's basically it. That's sad. <laughs> Obviously, I'm going to put one as paid, but this is from a UR arc, so if you don't have that, then you're kind of out of luck with fire swords. You could put on like a budget event sword or something if you want. It depends how much you care about the wall effects from his skills so if you don't care about the wall effects if you don't care about the fire wall effects that's going to give then you can just put on pure blade muramasa instead if you've got this this is a free to play sword and you should have this it's worth getting i always mention this whenever it's a sword unit because it's probably the best sword it's really good so highly recommend to use this very good sword the next weapon is where it gets a bit more interesting I'll have a look at other sword options while I'm here though. Obviously we got all of these, all of these swords are good. If they increase physical damage, then they're worth considering. Like, anything like this is pretty solid, so... Anything for fire or physical damage is going to be useful to have. Now we go on to second weapons. Obviously I would recommend a machine, but since he can't equip machines, I can't show that off yet. The other weapons you can equip are axes, hammers, spears. I'm going to have a quick look, but I don't think there's anything good here. Maybe you could equip this axe. This is a Godforge axe. It's pretty solid. You could potentially put this on him. Good option. You know what you could put is a spear. Like this one to give more physical damage, but also put on spear boost and high boost, and he's going to be able to take less physical damage, because spear high boost and spear boost allows him to take less physical damage, because those the spear boost do help with that. Quite useful. This hammer's not bad either, but that's kind of the only good options up here. Yeah, that's like 
not really anything else good, it's just the ones that I've favorited up here, so yeah, there aren't really that many options for other weapons, but swords, you should be fine with swords, right? There's a lot of sword options, so you should be fine with that. Problem is that most swords uh, don't have an element on it, so if you care about the element walls, then it may be a bit of a problem, but it's not a big deal, you don't need it, it's just... If you're on guild versus guild or arena, then the wall effects will be more important. If you're using him in PvE, then in, they're not that important. But if you don't care about the walls, then you're probably not going to care about his accessory. So that's another thing to think about is depending on your weapon equipments will depend on which of his paid equipments you would want to get to, I think. So for me... I think for the moment I'll just put, put on Kagosuchi for now, even though Roy's using it. Uh, yeah, that's a good sword to use, and who's paid, but what I will probably do... Actually, there's a good claw now I'm thinking about it that exists, I'm just remembering that. There's a fire claw, but obviously it can't equip claws, but if you put on claw equip, you could equip that. I'm going to use these two weapons for the moment, but you can use any of the other options I've showed, and as always, you could use Trishula. But there is another Fire Claw, which gives 40% fire skill damage, which is very good. It's a Godforge Claw, but if you got it, it's a good thing to consider using. That could be your fire weapon, then your second sword could be whatever. Up to you. Uh... Or you could put on Trishula. So I think that's the main options. Either two swords or one sword and one machine. Or one sword and one claw. At least one sword. Uh, you could put on a sword and a spear if you want him to be more tanky with the spear boost and high boost. Or you, can get, or you could put a sword and an axe for that axe that I showed if you got that. Because or one of the arcs giving break effect and piercing when you have an axe so there are a few options if you think about it it's just most of those weapons are non-attribute weapons which won't give you a wall effect accessories again it's quite easy uh, I'm gonna put on his page for the moment but in PvE you don't really need his paid accessory you would just want maximum damage I think so I'm thinking Mintfield Relief is always a good option, I always like that, accessory is great, gives movement speed too, could help, honestly. Anything that gives physical damage or fire damage is going to help. If you're building for his um, final bind skill to do more damage with that, then don't. I don't know if that if physical damage applies to it, so you may want to go for fire attack damage instead of physical damage. Fire physical slash magic damage. You could put this on. I'm trying to think of good options for accessories. I mean, there are a lot of good options. Fire slash ice attack damage. This one's good. Probably worth using that, honestly. Yeah. And then other other accessory can be anything for fire damage or physical damage. Movement speed is going to help. Damage caps. Depends on where you're using him in. If you want more revives for PvP, then you can do that if you want. Is not really a requirement for accessories since he's just a tank slash physical DPS unit it's not that difficult to build him so I'm gonna stick with this for the moment but this won't be my final build this is just for the showcase and I will be building him in arena and stuff in my own time because I have to learn a bunch of skills on him and everything like that so that'll take time but I'll tell you now if I'm gonna use him in arena I would probably Depending on his damage, if he has high damage, I would probably put on, I don't know, either a sword plus machine or sword plus claw for maximum damage. Accessories would probably have his paid, yeah, definitely his paid accessory in PvP, but if I'm using in PvE, I probably won't use his paid, so let's stick with this for the moment. And his stats right now are looking pretty good. You know, that's pretty great. Divine power. Yes. 
So, he is a dual wield unit, but he has more defense than strength. That's the first. That's just... uh, I'm hoping he's tanky enough. Let's try him out. I definitely want to do that, but first. But wait, there's more. I want to level up this. I do have one of these. I'm going to level it up right now to level 10 with that because I, I definitely want to do that. It's going to save time. Sword Mega Boost. I love it. It's 275 XP. Getting closer to level 54. I want to get there. I really do. Even though it doesn't give me anything, I just like seeing a high level. So at level 10, the trait on this is... What does it increase at level 11? Just the strength and skill damage gap. Okay. So each level above level 10 will give strength and the skill damage gap. So if you just care about the defense and the buffs for defense, then you don't really need to level up past that. Archive reward, will I get it? Yeah. The reason why I'm going to get it is because it allows me to learn these skills faster. And I think I'm going to be using these skills. I'm going to be using Dreadful Glare. And the Sword of Mega Boost quite a lot, I think. So, we're just going to get this Archive Reward. Why not? And it will be a good sword for Alice and any other special units that wants special damage can use that. Okay, we'll leave that there for the moment. And... Uh... Let's, I'm going to use, I can't really use someone with Honey Elixir to test him out. Who have I been using? Now let's just use Counselor 10 to make things easier. God, God, I mean, I swear... It was Guard Dog when I re read it the first time, so you can see why the D is very close. <laughs> it's very close. I just assumed because Guard Dog made sense to me. I mean, it's close enough, right? He's a dog. He's a Guard Dog. It, it makes sense to me. I know Guard God. They both sound right. I mean, I know it's Guard God now. Uh, Guard God Garland. That, that's a mouthful. That's a lot of G's in there. Okay. That's fine. Let's use Council of Ten. And uh, actually try him out now. Because I haven't tried him yet. Try him by himself. Yeah, I did the... I finished the story literally yesterday in Lillehammer. I'm not going to go to that area. I'm just going to go to the normal stage, but Lillehammer. Got to say, the new story is actually pretty good. Cutscenes. Pretty great. God, God, Garland, Gulen, Garland. Let's go. Just gonna see his base damage and try out his skills and everything because I've yet to use him in battle yet. So let's see how he plays out. I don't know what to expect. I'm hoping his skills could be spammed pretty fast. I should be moving over to the Steam version. I kind of forgot about that, honestly. I should do that right now. Because otherwise, it's going to be too laggy for anyone to see anything. Already opened it. Great. Only takes me two seconds to open it. Boom. Now we can try it properly. Uh, go by. I've already shut you down. Yeah, update the screen. Do it. Um... This one? No. Okay, well. 
continue still loading it up window capture no great well okay well I've loaded it but hasn't loaded it on the screen that's a weird one where's where's it on the screen show the screen show the screen <laughs> where'd it go I don't know uh, properties oh yeah that one I gotta turn that one off turn that one off this one is that one yeah oh I think I yeah I did that last time I think oh yeah I remember I was doing a different game that's right that's why I did I should have checked this before but I didn't actually unless it's one of these that yeah there you go easy hang on game window good enough okay let's try it again let's, let's go this time so god god garlands garlic see there's a lot of lunds isn't there we got Rollins, we got Balins, we got Garlands, what's next? I don't know. What else can go Lunds? I don't know. Let's try it out this time. I'm gonna use Counselor Tenarch's skill, get all of his skill stocks up, and then start spamming skills. So, yeah, his base skill stocks are going to be 5, 1, and 2. This is a, a bit weird. This is the first time we've seen, or probably one of the first times, he has more skill stocks of his skill 3 than his skill 2, which is weird. We're going to try his skill 2 first and see how good it is. Okay, I like it. Let's spam this and see how good it is. How fast. Decently fast. No attacks. Kind of basic. Yeah. Skill 3. That's cool. Obviously he's not going to be doing much damage here because he's just base skills and he doesn't have any slayers to these enemies, but... Okay, let's try the special out then. I have a feeling he's mostly going to be tanky. So it does 51 hits, yeah. And the skill 2... Yeah, that groups them all together. That's why it's so good, his skill 2. So you can use his skill 2 anywhere. Yeah, his skill 2 is definitely going to be his best skill to use. His skill 2 is going to be so good in Arena. I can already see that. Still more defense. Okay, let's try that again. He didn't manage to kill them all, which kind of concerns me a very tiny bit. A very small bit. Kind of. Because that implies that potentially his damage isn't going to be very high. But I'm hoping that his damage is high enough to be a DPS. Like, um, if he can, can compare to Claude in Arena, that would be great. Because Claude can be tanky and do a lot of damage at the same time. Garland needs to be able to fill that role of being tanky and also doing damage, I would think. Let's do this again. Let's test the range of his skill 1. Can I use it here? No, it's kind of a little lunge. Okay. Skill 3 can be used. Alright. The area is pretty big. Skill 2 will group them all together. Yeah. I thought because of his skill 2, I thought he was going to be like a dark unit, but he wasn't. 
Let me run. Okay. Hmm. I'm just looking at his animations and things first of all. So what I'm seeing based on his skills so far is they're not very spammable, you know. I mean his skill 1 is okay for being able to spam it, but you can't spam his skill 2 because you've only got a base skill stock of 1 on his skill 2, you can't really spam it at all. Leave me alone. I'll try spamming a skill 3 now, twice, but I don't think it's going to be able to spam that fast. It, I just want to see the delay between the next time he uses it. Kind of basic. Then use the special. Yeah, I can already tell. I don't think his DPS is going to be that high, based on the animations of his skills. But that group of his skill too. Okay. I wonder if he's supposed to be a main tank or what his role is going to be. Well, since he does have damage, he should be able to play a role of a tank slash DPS in arena, I would think. Okay. Well, that was okay. Honestly, uh, the problem is he wasn't doing that much damage, but there was base skills and he didn't have any slayers, so it's not too bad. Kind of solid. Skill 2. I need to do more testing of his skill 2. Let's do, let's try spam his skill 2 twice to see how that goes. And then we can try out a full team. And just kind of have a little fun with him and then we'll see. Let's use skill 2 twice. Yeah, that's pretty fast. Skill 2 seems pretty fast, honestly. Skill 3 isn't really that fast. There's definitely a delay between the next time you use it. Skill 1 delay isn't that bad. Yeah. The delay between skills is the most important thing for seeing how their DPS is going to be. So, yeah. He's definitely not a DPS. Special wasn't bad either. Okay, let's get out of here. I'm going to try putting him in a full team and how he will perform there. Just realizing we have yet to get a DOH unit with a Charisma for Fire skill damage caps. Would have been nice for him, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I was using this team. Let's go with... Put Garland in. I'm going to try and focus on maximum damage this time to see how we can perform. Which means Prefect of Gods is coming back again. And a bunch of supports like... Um, yeah. Lelouch. He's great. And who's the third unit going to be? you I think and then you can use I don't know doesn't matter not too much we'll just use holy war then or there we go I'll just try this for the moment I was using her for normal attacks recently uh, I'm kind of gonna need yeah honey elixir is good enough so the main point here is I just want to see his damage, so Expert is going to give him Slayer damage and Lelouch is going to give obviously his damage buff and damage cap buff. I should have wakened him honestly. So we'll try this, see what the damage is going to look like. It should definitely be... A lot higher. So you'll use that. 
And you'll use that. Wait for that tiny elixir. And then... Theopolis. I'm gonna use a skill 2 instantly and then start using skill 3. 70... okay, it's 80... you know what? 82,700. <laughs> um... Yeah. So... You... Bitch... Stole... The spotlight... From Garland... Anyway... It, the... That... I'm gonna do that again. That... Obviously was all support... Pretty strong, but obviously it's expected to be that strong. The damage cap pretty good, but it doesn't mean anything when the skills are not that fast, so let's do that again. I think that was good. It's pretty good. Theopolis. Yeah, basically the strategy is always going to be using a skill 2 first, and then probably a skill 3. Hmm. You know, what I noticed is the... I'm going to do this one more time, but with the skill 1s instead. The damage modifiers on his skill 2 are higher than his skill 3, because his skill 2 was hitting damage cap quite easily, while his skill 3 wasn't, so... Yeah, his skill 2 is definitely going to be his main skill. They definitely want you to use a skill 2, but they don't want you to use it too much because he's only got one skill stock of it. You can increase that by a lot if you put on a skill stock 2 and purple orb and even counselor 10. You can increase it to up to 4 maximum, but I think increasing it to 2 is fine. This time I'm going to use a skill 2, and then start spamming a skill 1 to see what the damage numbers look like. So you're going to see skill 2 hits damage cap quite easily. Yeah, all of those hit damage cap easily, and then skill 1 doesn't either. Okay, well, I learned something. Skill 1 and 3 have lower damage modifiers than a skill 2. A skill 2, very important. Very important in skill 2. Uh, I, I'm a little surprised that his skill 1 and skill 3 couldn't hit cap, hit damage cap, but at least a skill 2 could. I think a skill 2 will be great. Hmm. Sky high and skills like that when enemies are in the air are going to help quite a bit because skill 2 probably pulls all the enemies in the air as well. Sounds good to me. Okay. One thing I could test as well is the UR arc while I'm here. I could try that just for the sake of trying. So let's have a look, see. Okay, for the sake of testing, I'm going to put on every single defense up on Ruto. And then just see how much defense I can give to <laughs> someone else. So, can I reach uh, 5,000? Defense, that has 40, that good enough, almost, I just want to do this to see, to test the arc trait, because I've yet, yet to do that, that's good enough. Okay, so, how am I going to test this, um, let's do something first, I'm going to put in this or should I use someone else
I could just use anyone right and see how much defense it gives to them. So let's just go in the battle first and see both of their base defense. And then I equip the UR arc and then I see the defense difference. That's just the test here. 6,601 and 984. I just want to see how this trait works. That's why I'm doing this. I'm pretty sure I know how it works. Now we do this. And what's the defense like now? So she has that buff, yeah. He has obviously actually a lot more defense. Okay. And you now have 2,632. Okay. You know what? You know, this isn't actually that bad. You know, like... I'm gonna try something else. I'm gonna try something else. Real quick. Um... I'm gonna try to reach a lot, and I mean a lot, of defense on Bruto. And I'll tell you how I'm gonna do this. Gorm. Defended buff to ally with lowest max HP, excluding unit boost HP and defense. Yeah, you know, this. <laughs> so, what I'm gonna do, I'm just boosting defense. I'm gonna see how this works. Actually, I should have... Yeah, that. Good. Enough. Right. So, my plan here... I'm just trying to get as much defense as possible. This, by itself, this trait gives 25% defense to the unit. So, Gorma's gonna get 25% more defense. And then it's gonna give a, debu a buff to Ruto. Which is gonna give a 20% defense, defense boost of Ship Gorm's defense and it's also going to give the defended buff on ruto which is going to give another ridiculous buff of defense and then he's just going to have as much defense as possible which might be this what's the highest defense or it could be ancient weapon yeah that one that's good so we're going to go over this and see what the defense looks like. See what the numbers look. Because some team like this could potentially work in guild battles. And I'm worried to see the numbers. Okay. 11,267 defense. E... Huh. Hmm. Okay. Well, I don't know what to say. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. It works, though. Yeah. Okay. Well. Yeah, the guard dog. Guard gods protect. I keep saying dog because I think he's a dog. He's like a dog guarding his place. That's what I think of. Because usually you say guard dog. Protection, boost defense, defended, yeah. Okay, well, that's just what I wanted to see. That's all I want to see. But, as you know, yeah, that, some kind of combo like this, gonna be hilarious. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm a tiny bit worried, but not too much. But what I'm thinking is someone could use this arc with Shift Gorm in Guild vs Guild and then the other unit can be anyone else like a healer or something or Ruto or whatever and then you reach insane defense numbers <laughs> that's gonna be so funny you can probably even increase his yeah you know what More defense. Yes. 
going mad with power now. I I have to I have to tr see how much defense I can. Huh. Hmm. You know. Just trying to reach as much defense as possible. It's a new one for me. Do some more stats. Well, I'll do this one more time, and then you kind of get the point, right? It's this is kind of the main use for this. I want to put on the one accessory that I was thinking of. Uh, this accessory gives more defense. Right. Here. There you go. Now we're going to do this one more time. I just want to see what the defense looks like again. Or... Yes. Even more. More defense. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, it's kind of fun. Let's, 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 let's try this. I just want to see Ruto's defense, because as you know, Ruto probably has the highest defense, I think. I think. Was it like this time? 12,329. Okay. Sure. Right. Great. Yeah. Okay, uh, well, you get the point. You know what I want to try? 12,300 whatever. If I remove the guard, god, arc, what's the difference? If I were to do this instead, what's the difference in defense? This will kind of tell you. Okay, so it's like a, de a difference of like close to 2,000, like 1,800 defense or something. So yeah, you know, the guard god defense buff isn't terrible as long as you're using it on a tank with a lot of defense like Shift Gorm or Ruto then the other unit should be getting a lot of defense from it so that's actually not bad and even Garland if he has a lot of defense then he could do something similar where he uses that arc and buffs another teammate to give them a lot of defense it's not terrible honestly I think it's okay I think it's main use is definitely going to be in guild battles now I think about it because more defense give a defense buff to ally with lowest defense definitely going to be for round two and I may consider trying something like that but I don't know yet maybe not because defense is mostly useful for against physical attacks and most people use mages in guild battles so I'm going to level this up if leveling this up gives more defense why not okay we'll leave that there then this is fine dreadful glare is definitely going to be something that I'm going to consider putting on more units tank units especially okay well, that was fun I reached like 12,000 something defense on Ruto. That's that's a lot. That's a lot of defense. Can't say much more than that. Other than it's big numbers. So, anything else I want to try right now? Well, I can't really test Garland much more. I'm going to go into the event unit test play quest. I might as well try him here. Yeah, I might as well try him here. See his performance here. What's his stats? 3,300 defense. Okay, fine. Great. We're just going to try him here. The final test for the day. Because... 
I need to focus on building him properly, and I'm going to do that later. So, 33,000, 20 something thousand, 20 something. Yeah, the damage modifiers of his skill 2 are definitely higher than his skill 1 and skill 3, but his skill 3 is higher than his skill 1. Might as well try the special out here, see if it's any different. It should do more damage this time. Yeah, there you go. Decent enough. It's something, at least. And we can just finish him off. Yeah, his skill 3 is kind of a bit slow. It would have been good, but it's just a bit slow. I wonder if he can break. Like, against a proper boss. Probably not. He's probably not a breaker. Thirty. Okay. Let's kill him off. Okay, so... Yeah, his skills... Yeah, he's definitely not going to be a good PvE DPS. He's not going to be a great DPS at all. But... His main use is definitely going to be for... PvP. I, I would think... For sure that... Claude would be a better DPS than him. Claude dual wield would probably be better DPS than Garland, I would think. Because Claude has decent damage caps and his skills are pretty fast, especially his skill 3, very fast. Garland doesn't really have fast skills, but fast skills aren't really a big issue in PvP content. I mean, it does help, like, as you know, Summer Sarah, Shift Sarah, uh, her skill 2 being incredibly, incredibly fast does help. And it can kill enemies incredibly fast, but it's not always needed because if it takes, if it's a longer skill, it can just be more flinching, you know, it could be fine. So, I think that's everything. Let's quickly look at the event. Why not? Um, yeah, it's just another. I don't really need to talk much about this event other than. There are Pockles in the map, I've already found them, and there are some in trading spaces and places, there are still a few that I'm missing, but if you find them, then you can get these to pull for the limited Halloween arcs. I should get his prism too. Lena has a new costume, which is nice. Uh, honestly, Alina's not a terrible unit because she can be a good healer and healers are useful. So, Alina using Glass Record or Keen Eye is a decent support unit. So, some people may like using her. Her Halloween costume looks pretty good. But, no shift Lena would have been nice though. But, costumes are nice too. They could introduce like more cosmetic stuff, but... Anniversary match training space. Since this event has ended, you might as well trade for everything here. Uh, I'll do that later. There isn't really anything else I want to show, I believe. I've already traded for everything here. Use the last one on a piece of gold, because why not? Uh... Yeah, I still haven't used those. Let's go back. I think... Yeah, I don't think there's much else I want to... Talk about here. There is actually a few more. There's one thing. Uh, the important unit got Sixth Enhance. She got Sixth Enhance, Spirit Maiden Thuria. So, do that now. Do it. Right now. No excuses. You get Spirit Maiden Thuria to Sixth Enhance as soon as possible. Because she's still one of the best units in the game, even though Renna has dethroned her, it's still worth doing. 
because Spirit Main and Thibria still gets used a lot, especially in like Guild vs Guild content and stuff, because basically allows you to have Renna and Spirit Main and Thibria, so a great yeah I might consider doing this I'm, I'm probably gonna do that Spirit Mega 3 is still great getting close to level 54 so let's have a quick look at what her Sixth Enhance skills give these are pretty useful Obviously, Temel SC is going to be the most important one. Buff duration is whatever, really. Don't care too much about that. More HP. HP recovery does help a little bit. Physical damage taken minus 10% is going to help a little bit. More HP recovery. That's nice. Less magic damage taken is nice. And more HP recovery cap is going to help quite a bit. Because her healing cap isn't that high. So, I would definitely recommend to get all of these. Maybe not the this one, but everything else, like SC, take less damage, more HP recovery, and everything is going to be worth having. So, I'm definitely going to be doing that as soon as possible, probably later today or something, but... Also, if you get to level 120, then you get three more God, Pro God Relic Prism Shards, and they're great. There were a few more Sick and Hearts units, but I don't really care about them, so I'm not really going to mention those. So, I think that's it. Uh, actually, the popularity poll. What were you thinking? Like, These are the top 10 units. Kyle, Theria, Alice, Linus, Adele, Grafell, Moana, Megius, Ryvern, Nael. I... It's a weird selection, honestly, and I wouldn't personally pick any of these, but it's up to you. I mean, I know people want Megius Shift because he was number one at the end of the last vote, but we got to vote one of these units. Uh, I Honestly, at this point, I'm not really fast, but I was just using logic with the fact that Nael, Ryvern, and Megius don't need a shift because they're still current units that are still strong. So I would probably vote for Adele, but that's me. You can vote for whoever you want. A shift, Megius would make sense story wise, probably, but I don't know. You decide. I probably gonna go for Adele, but it's not. It's not gonna win. It's probably gonna be Megius again, but. Whatever. Halloween challenge. I'm still missing these three. I, he's preparing to fight a strong foe. Maybe he's with his friends on the world map. What if you gather seven Puggles? Okay. <laughs> well, be sure to find all those. Uh, I think that's everything I wanted to cover in this stream. Um... Yeah, I guess my conclusion then for this dream. Garland, first of all. Garland's a very good unit. Um, you would probably consider him or Zekka since both banners are on right now. So, you know, they're both strong. Like, we know how good Zekka's foregate is, especially with Linus. Like, I talked about that earlier. Don't need to talk about that too much. Just, it's just a very good combination. And he can be a good support. Garland needs more testing to really understand how good he is. Because since he's a completely new unit. We can't instantly build him with all of the learnable skills. So it's going to take me like a, a few days or a week to build him fully. So that's going to take me some time to fully understand his potential in PvP content. And what his DPS is like. But at least what I'm seeing so far is... DPS probably isn't going to be that high. I think his usability, how good he's going to be in PvP, is probably going to be decent enough to be a top tier arena unit, but probably not the best. Because his damage didn't seem the best to me, but I'm hoping that his damage can be enough to be a solid DPS in arena, as well as tanking hits at the same time. I'm hoping. And one thing I didn't test was the... Um, one skill that when he dies, 
he does a 5 attack to the enemy that killed him. I haven't tried that yet. Because that's not really something I can try, is it? No, no, not really. I'll have to try that in Arena or something at some point. But that's going to require a lot more building to really see how strong that is. Maybe it's not strong at all. Like, Prefect of God's Mia, Pillar of Light, isn't really that strong. It's just kind of a little bit of damage. So maybe it's something like that. I don't know. Have to see. The UR arc actually pretty solid since i done testing with this now the defense buff is pretty solid no pun intended or maybe it is i realized what i said after i said it but yeah defense buff pretty good it's gonna help probably in guild battles on round two if you're going for a stool r2 i think this may potentially help but the only problem is this is only a defense buff so how beneficial is it going to be up to you really because mages are a problem in guild battles quite a bit and you kind of want to tank magic attacks more than physical attacks in most cases so maybe this defense buff like i showed could be useful if you use this on shift gorm and then your second unit can be anyone else but yeah the main synergy with this arc trait is with shift gorm honestly because Shift Gorm does well with defense, and he also has his own defended buff. So having both of these debuffs, well, both of these buffs go on a single unit is going to be quite a big increase. And you know what? I should try that out. I should just go on to a unit that has, like, no defense and put on Shift Gorm as the second slot and see how much defense I can give to that unit. I did try that with, um, yeah, just... Uh, defended buff from this arc trait and ruto i think i tried that it was pretty decent and it added like 1800 ish defense it adds quite a bit of defense so it can be a solid arc trait and the strength and skill damage cap can be good by itself too so honestly i think the arc is better than i originally thought it was especially the trait the trait it's more situational you know so Learnable skills are the main selling point for that, like I said before, earlier. So, yeah. Good unit and good arc. I think the unit is more interesting, honestly, to me. But they both have, have value. And there are a few people thinking that there may be a collab around the corner again. I know we just had a collab, but... There should be a collab between now and Christmas some point. So, I've no idea when that's going to be. But I'm hoping we get a rerun of something soon. But don't worry about that yet. Just pull for what you like and what's going to benefit your account and just have fun with it. Because if you just keep worrying about future things releasing, then you're just not going to be able to enjoy the game. But if you are a light spender, then it is a bit more important. So saving for collabs is the smartest thing to do. But if you spend a little bit, you could do like lap one of the step catcher and leave it there. Maybe do a few pulls, but it's up to you. If you still don't have anything from Zekka's Four Gates banner, then I would probably recommend this banner over Garland's banner. But honestly, they're both very good banners. You can't go wrong with either of them, because they're both going to benefit everyone's account. If you get anything from this banner that's new, one of the two rate-up things, you're just going to be very well with that. It's going to be great. Yeah, I can see value on both these banners, so... But I would recommend Zekas over Garland, but they're both great. I think I've talked everything that I wanted to about these units. I think they're both great. Honestly, most units that release nowadays are going to be top tier units. They do that a lot. They are unique somewhat. I mean, some units like Shift Logia wasn't really that exciting to me. So that's why I didn't get him. But units like Zekas and Garland and... DOH units in general are just very strong, and collab units most of the time are just very strong, so DOH and collab units, even some permanent units like um, Shift Foul was very good, most units that release are very good, so yeah, you get the point, good banners overall, uh, this update in general, good update because it does add a Halloween event, I think... Halloween event, I, I like those, even though they don't add too much. Another free arc 
might as well take free stuff. Uh, probably not going to be as exciting as part 1, honestly. I think most people are probably going to be looking at part 1 and not part 2. If people are just starting the game, you've still got time to start the game now because there's still the anniversary going on. But part 1 was the best time to start because there was a new story and a bunch of bonuses and everything. But part 2 is still great, so yeah. I'll leave that there, I think. I've still got a lot of stuff I want to do. I've got to build garlands, mess around with the UR arc, UR arc, and also mess around with garland and arena, and potentially a guild versus guild, maybe. It depends. I've also got to continue doing the story stages, because, by the way, there is a new unit in story stages that I haven't unlocked yet, but I'm almost there. There's a new hard boss stage, if you've seen it. Uh... You probably would have heard of it by now, but not going to say his name, but there's a new story unit. He's interesting. I'm going to work on getting him soon as well, and that's going to be fun. So yeah, good updates personally. Uh, looking forward to the next one, which is going to be in two weeks from now. I don't know what to expect next, but I'm not going to worry about it yet. I'm just going to have fun with what is here. I think this is the final part for the anniversary. Because it's just a 4.5 year anniversary, it's not going to be very long compared to the 4 year anniversary. They're just kind of in between. So, we'll see what is in two weeks from now. I'm going to be doing a lot of farming and I've got a lot of stuff to do. So, have fun with this anniversary. We've still got like two weeks left. You've still got a lot of time to decide if you want to pull on these banners or do a few daily pulls. Up to you. You make your decision. I'm just giving... The knowledge and advice that I know based on a testing and everything on these units I can never give a you must get this the only time I would do that is Renna that's like the only time I've ever said you must get this unit because she she's great she's probably the best unit yeah she, she is the best unit in the game so yeah I'll see you in two weeks from now I'm gonna add the timestamps very soon today uh, there is actually quite a lot of things that I'm looking forward to starting November, so I'm looking forward to that. But in the meantime, I'm going to be farming this. Hopefully you will be farming this event too. One more thing that I want to mention, there isn't any tickets for Garland. There isn't any rate up banners or anything for Garland, so you can't hope to get him from tickets. You can only hope to get Zekas from tickets. And the new login event, I believe the tickets are for Zekas banner. Zekas Fourgates banner, so uh, maybe you want to keep saving just in case you get Zekas Fourgate from the login tickets because the part two login tickets you could get something from there. Who knows? So, yeah, just some advice for you if that's helpful. I'll see you in two weeks. The stream was actually pretty long considering I didn't think it would be. Uh, pretty fun unit, gonna do more testing. I'm repeating myself now because I don't want to end the stream. So yeah. Bye. I guess. Won't waste any more time. I'll add the timestamps too. I can't talk anymore. I've been talking too long.